Now this is out of sequence. It's Sunday. I've just come back from church service number one. Going to have my lunch. Go and do church service number two. We've got 18 minutes. So I thought we'll get on with this. Now we're supposed to be doing that HMV radiogram 2411. It's Sunday. We're not doing those on a Sunday. So we'll be doing that on Monday. But Mr Chippy says he might do the electronics today. That's entirely up to him. Um... We've got this President Richard, it's got my name on it. I wish, right, we'll open it up. 50 watt. I haven't even dared look at my wholesaler bill yet. Well, we've got an instruction book, so that's a turn up for the uh, books. As, <laughs> we've got another plumbing sticker. Nice the case radio. A box we can't close again. Well, this is going to be fun on our two and a half amp bench power supply, isn't it? If it if it suddenly did boot up at that kind of power level. But it isn't going to. So what's these sockets on the back? Changes glasses because I can't see them. Extension speaker, public address and Vox. So you can't argue that that's nicely made. It's got a traditional meter which hopefully lasts longer than the meters on those Midland 48s we've been having a lot of. You've got a 5 amp, five volt um, USB outlet to charge you whatever. I hope the echo isn't part of the set. Uh, that would be frustrating. So what would be a channel 9 switch is emergency 1 and emergency 2 which is programmable therefore. Concentric RF gain and mic gain. It won't be a real rotary switch, it'll be just a, an up-down uh, rotary encoder. Then push to access something men menu-wise. So, yes, it looks uh, traditional. So before we open it up, we'll start jotting down what it does. Plug our test equipment into it. It does have a six pin mic plug, and I must say I prefer those kind of plugs than modular plugs. Uh, modular plugs being those telephone type things. Am I putting that the right way round? So it comes with a thick power lead for people who will obviously go at sea and can use this at its full power 200 miles off the UK limits better make sure the current limits are set to full on the power supply does it tell us how many volts the radio is? Made in China, serial number 774. No mention of volts. Finds English. And the phone's ringing. So when I get there, there's nobody there. And the trouble is, you know... This is a long building. By the time I get to the phone, they've gone. So if people only let it ring about eight times, I can't get there in time. And you can see how bothered I am, can't I? I'm not. I'm not going to do one four seven one and see who's ringing. Spend my money phoning people back. It's probably double glazing anyway. Or perhaps I'm about to be arrested for some <laughs> something happening in India. I don't know. So it says here it's 13.8 volts, and when it boils down to it, you, 
what did it say on the box? Was it 50 watts? Yeah. So it becomes 13 watts AM, and they've worked out that's 50 watts peak envelope power, or 40 watts FM. So when it boils down to it, it isn't that anyway. And it's a, So, um, let's see what happens when we switch it on. And it needs to be, obviously we're going to have to set that up for you, but just for the initial power up, we'll switch it on. So what do you have to do? Press that longer. Oh, it's in UK. It's in UK mode already. So, that's interesting. So you can't go to CPT once it's in UK. That's it. Oh, that suits me. You'd have to reprogram it then for something else. What do you press mode? Yeah, you press mode, not band. So we're now on AM CPT. Uh. So now we're on. What? Six five five. What on earth's that? That's not a. Uh, that's not a. An authorized. What the hell's it doing? Oh dear! Oh dear! Oh dear! It seems, it seems to have arrived in some kind of export mode. So how do we get it out of that? We've got reset in case we have to do that. And setting the the fact it's going to be UK. Oh dear, this is a faff. Work back, pause the video. Too much to read. Okay, so I've actually been conned here. It's actually a grey import. It's a grey set, isn't it? It um, It isn't a multi-norm set. It can be used illegally on 27.79125. If I was to sell this, I'd have to disable the mode switch and I'd have to disable the band switch so that it... and turn the power to 4 watts because it's doing 25 so if I switch the power meter on, that is, oh no, it's not, it's, no, 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 it's, uh, it's doing five, six, seven, seven and a half watts. So that's a problem. Right, we better open it up and see whether it actually has any internal adjustments or whether it's going to have some DAF menu. Well, you get a plug-in speaker at least, except the sockets come away with it because it's such crap quality. Let's see whether we can put that back in. Now we've seen this chassis, I'm sure, in another set.
So the next day, after some, quite frankly, disappointed with how this has come, uh, I've got the service manual. I need to get that ordered and sent electronically. Uh, right. So it's arrived to me, hasn't it, in, shall we say, export mode, and it shouldn't have done it. It's not a CB radio. It is sold as an amateur radio, and, of course, it's one of these grey areas where it isn't actually legal as a CB radio in the UK. So we're going to have to lock this permanently into being a ham radio because we're not having anything illegal here. Simple as that. So the specification from the service manual says it's 28 to 29.699 and that's indeed what it now is. Um, it does say it does 40 watts FM and 13 and a half watts AM and we'll be able to do a scratchy corner test with Mr. Chippy because he does have a um, the amateur radio in his uh, in his own car, not the normal. We normally use the electric uh, Nissan Leaf, but in his own private car, he's got um, one of these Chinese sets that does um, 29 FM, um, 70 centimeters. I think it's 50 megs, and and uh, two meters as well. So he'll be able to talk to us on his uh, ham radio set quite legitimately. So that's what we'll do. So I didn't ever want to buy anything like this, to be quite frank, but having bought it wholesale, it can't go back. So what do we do? We've got to get this into test mode. And if I switch picture in picture on, I'm on, let's put it somewhere in the middle of the band. I'll put it on 29. Oh, you can change the digits, can't you? Oh, I don't like all this faff. Okay, so we're on 29 megs exactly, which is probably about where we want to be, because it's going to be used... FM and probably a bit of AM, which I'm fully entitled to do. So, if you we've got the picture in picture on, and the radio is doing five, six, seven, seven point eight watts, and if I show you the frequency counter, it's showing twenty nine dead. So that's spot on. Deviations low as we already showed when it was in its naughty mode. Oh, and I've purposely damaged the printed circuit board so it can't go back into being illegal. Oh, I am good with a mini grinder. Um, so to get it into test mode, it's not a CB, so I don't mind spilling the beans because it's a amateur radio. So what does it say? Echo off, yes. Echo off, echo position, emergency one off, knob automatic noise limiter to off, press PTT, mode, and band, and turn on the radio. That didn't work. Let's try again. Press PTT, mode, and band, and turn on the radio. Well, something happened then.
So echo off. Emergency one. Off. High cut. Off. Press PTT. Mode. And band. And turn on the radio. No, I'll pause the video while I try and get it to do this. Oh, it's me. I misunderstood the instructions. The echo has to be on to get it into... It says echo stroke off in echo position. I have to bear in mind it's a translation. So, PH, we need to rotate this until we get to 40 watts. Well, this test set will only read 30. So, we'll just go a bit beyond that. Don't know why that is. AM power. The maximum is 13 and a half. So we need to now move up. Move up the menu to deviation. Oh, we've got AM next, have we? So let's see where that is. That's at 13 and a half watts. That's fine. Because it won't be able to modulate beyond that. So let's... You see, this is the, this is the point. It's all right, people say, oh, yeah, I could make it do 40 watts on AM, but the modulation will still only be the same amount, and so it'll under-modulate, and it, you won't actually get any range. So th this is why it's less power. So AM amplitude, not interested in that, but uh, we will just check it's somewhere around the 90% they say. So we'll be, as a ham radio, we'll be using it on AM to communicate with some of my... I've got an old Heath kit, which is the only way I'm, reason that I'm doing this. I've got a 1960s Heath kit, which I'm going to rebuild, which is single channel AM. So uh, that's going to be an interesting project. So uh, we need to set the test equipment to do AM, which I've just done, and we now need to key up and tune it in. So we'll do that. Wallow. One, two. One, two. It's got this stupid echo. Come on. You know, as an amateur radio, that would really have the uh, DTI or whatever they're called coming around to uh, smite you. So we need to increase this because it's actually not enough. Wallow. One, two. Wallow. It's not good, but it's above 80%. Wallow. Now, I haven't got the mic gain up, so I, I, I take my words back. Wallow. Go back to 180. Wallow, that's ninety percent. That's that works for me. So what other parameters have we got? Uh, that'll be software version. So we're back to power high, which is only which is only doing 13 and a half watts for me whether or not it does when the radio is back into normal mode from out of test mode I don't know so that's it we're back to that's it we're done that's everything where was FM deviation I didn't did I see that I didn't see that no we need to so power high power medium 
FM. I've never tested that. One. Oh, I think that's about right. Let's try that. One, two, wallow. It's good. Do we still it a bit more? Let's take it up another. Uh, take it up to three hundred and fifty. Wallow. Right. So we'll take it out of that mode now. Let's, what, let's see what the high power is now. Still only 17 watts. Oh! <laughs> it's only... <laughs> you know, shall I go back to school? It's because our power supply is limiting, isn't it? Our power supply is a 2.5 amp power supply. Right, we'll start again. We'll plug it into the 18 amp power supply, which we have here for business radios. What an absolute plonker, Rodney. <laughs> Mind you, he's only doing 15 watts now. But I'll be able to go and adjust it, won't I now? So we'll I'll go back into menu, so it's echo on, band mode, switch on. No, that didn't happen. Echo on. Oh, you got, forgot to hold the PTT. I'm going to run out of fingers. It's lucky I'm a church organist. Okay, so. Key up again. Well, my machine only goes up to 30 watts. And it's... Um, I don't want to go higher than that. I don't want to damage the test equipment. And I don't need higher power than that anyway. Most of my amateur radio stuff's done 20 watts and less. So it's interesting that you, as you turn it down, it go the power goes up. Right, we can take it out of interest. We'll just see what AM power is in a moment. So I'll turn the radio off, go back to normal. And of course he's doing about 30 it's it's just over full scale deflection, so it's going to be about 35 watts. We're going to leave it at that. Uh, so I, if I go to AM on the same frequency, so I press mode and it's um It's about 12 watts. And then you've got variable power on the front panel. So let's just see where that is. We'll go back to FM. So FM, we've got full scale deflection when I key up as you can see. And as we turn this down, so we've got it at three quarters on the knob. We're now doing 25 watts. At half position, we're doing 14 watts. At quarter two, we're doing five watts. And then at the bottom, we're doing two and a half watts. So what's five, ten, uh, five, twelve and a half, twenty-five, and full wax about thirty-five. So that's a useful thing. So I wonder what happens now when we press emergency channel, because it's, it's no longer a CB radio. 
it's just programmed to do it on 28.04 so that's programmable and that's something that we'll be able to um, alter to calling channel for example so that would make it quicker you know you could you could set on the main VFO effectively um, the channel you want to go to you can set a calling channel on um, on one of those silly switches there <laughs> so there we go we did the test on uh, for receive and it was doing that fine um, it does have some other modes I don't know if, I can't remember if we went do, through those yesterday I forgot I've even forgotten how we went into it it was in the instruction book so band name Echo delay, how ridiculous that won't be coming on. Got to reset, color, key beep, Roger bleep, and receive tone. Dimmer, so emergency channel, I'll set that up. Um, we, can, we can fiddle with those. And then you've got SWR, I'm not quite sure how that works. Let's see. Shows you how to connect an SWR meter, and then it's got this built in SWR check. SWR adjustment. This allows to adjust the SWR by beep tones. Push the knob to get into menu, we've done that. Rotate it so you get to. SWR. You know what? This is quite hot, and I've only done those transmit tests for 30 seconds. Um, press the rotary knob, and the radio will go into test mode without pressing the PTT switch. And the SWR measurement starts. The re remaining time is displayed. Adjust your antenna. The beep tone is continuous when your SWR is equal to 1.0. As the SWR moves away from 1.1, the beeps become longer. Okay, so obviously we're into the test set and it's a perfect SWR. Um, so what do we do? Done that. Press the switch and it automatically goes into TX mode. Oh, it's timed out, hasn't it? So, menu, SWR, press the switch. Oh, of course, we're not going to speak connector, have, have we? So as you say, as you can see, that's continuous because it's a one-to-one -one SWR. So if I turn the power down, it's still coping with that. So what I'm going to now do is to put it on our aerial at low power, so it's doing two and a half watts. Uh, I ought to look at the band plan before doing this. I'll be very quick. It's about one, I think it's about 1.7 normally, but of course we're now on, on 10 meters, so I don't know what the SWR is going to be like. But as long as it's under, you know, like two and a half, I'm not really bothered. So we're going to it again. Let's put it, I'll put it on. I'll put it on 29.4, that rings a bell. In fact, I tell you what, I'll pause the video. 
I can't even speak. I'll pause the video and I'll actually look up because I don't want to upset anyone. I'll just call through on our local repeaters. Does anyone know what the calling channel is for uh, 29 megs? Um, for 10 meters, it's a 29.6. So I'm glad I didn't go on there because it turns out that 29.4 is in satellite band. So 29.6, I'll put that into the uh, emergency memory. So it's band I channel 1. So we'll do that. In fact, we'll do that right now. So band I. So there we are, band I. So it's channel one. That's really good. That is really good because we've now got in uh, emergency channel one we've now got calling channel for uh, 10 meters fm and later on i'll tell you what i'll put um, calling channel for am which is a totally different frequency in the emergency two position so that's uh, that's all right so um we were doing swr weren't we so we'll go back into that menu there we go and now we'll see what the swr is on my aerial Whoa! It's f it says it's four point four to one. <laughs> That's good, isn't it? Not. <laughs> we'll go out of that. I I will check that uh, on a real SWR meter. Uh, what have we got? Tell you what, we'll use the analyzer. So we'll just put the radio down a moment and get the analyzer out. Right, so having dragged the analyzer away, we'll plug that in, switch it off. Which mode are we in? We're in, we want 29 megs, we're currently at 70. So the absolute best of this aerial is 1.6 to 1 and it's 27.8, 27.9 and it's lucky that we are um, because we normally use it on those upper channels. Um, so by the time we get to 29.6 uh, this is saying that we're 2.5 to 1. All right, so there we are. A disappointing purchase because I thought it was a CB radio. It isn't a CB radio. Um, our wholesalers had it in the wrong category, to be honest. And so I've permanently made it into the ham radio it reckons it was. So if I croak it and it gets sold, though I can assure you that if I croak it, my sister will be here quicker than the, the ink could dry on the uh, death certificate to come and lay down a dozen skips to throw the contents away. <laughs> so, not a CB radio, it was intended to be a CB test. Um, so there we are. We'll see, proof of the pudding is going to be in the eating. I've never been on 29 megs. Um, I've been licensed since 1978. And it, um, it, I say I, I bought a Heathkit AM um, a Benton Harbour lunchbox, which I'm going to be overhauling on video uh, in the subsequent uh, months. I have to have a crystal made at great expense as well uh, for the, the 30 quid a crystal, aren't they these days? You know, so you know, people say to me, "I've got a realistic 1002 handheld. I'd like to have it on another channel." Yeah, that's fine. The pair of crystals will cost you 60 quid. <laughs> Thanks for watching, the President Richard.
amateur radio. Bye.